Hello, this is Albert van Dijk, and in this video I want to um, explain a little bit about active optical remote sensing, or also called LiDAR. Uh, and as we saw before, that stands for uh, light detection and ranging. Um, and the most common application is really um, uh, from airplanes, uh, as we'll see later on. Um, but um, uh, what you can see here is the typical uh, configuration of a LiDAR system uh, on an airplane, where you see as, as the plane moves forward, uh, the um, the lidar pulse, the, the, a pulse of light, a beam of light is sent to the Earth's surface uh, and um, comes back to the airplane. So how does it work? Well, basically the uh, system on board the airplane emits a laser uh, 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 in an optical or uh, near infrared wavelength. And in fact, uh, on land typically that would be near infrared. Um, and then it basically measures what comes back from the surface. Um, so as you can imagine, it, uh, you're looking at a, a, a beam of uh, photons in uh, the near infrared uh, frequency uh, and uh, those photons hit the surface or elements above the surface, uh, return to the airplane. Some of them do, a lot of them of course don't, but some of them return to the airplane uh, and uh, those are measured. Uh, the time is recorded, how long did it take those photons to come back uh, and uh, from that with the speed of light. The distance can be calculated uh, to the target. So here's another way of, uh, of uh, what that system uh, work looks like, or at least how the principle works. And as you can see, uh, typically there's a, a mirror involved that uh, scans uh, from uh, left to right, or from right to left, uh, and, and maps out the uh, uh, location, because we know the angle and we know the distance, so you can know the location. Of the returns of the uh, of the of the of the photons of the signal, uh, and so um, you know you can you can map out a picture if you like, or a, or a, or a model of uh, where uh, solid objects are with respect to the sensor, uh, and that same system is is uh, used on uh, on uh, for instance Google Car as well to know whether there's any objects around uh, and so forth. Now, uh, one important thing to remember is that we don't have a very um, f uh, narrow pulse of light going to the surface. In fact, the further away uh, you go from the aircraft, the broader the beam uh, of, the, uh, of the laser becomes. And so, by the time we get to the surface, typically you'd be looking at an area of maybe um, uh, a few meters, if your plane uh, flies very high, or more typically uh, with, uh, with the lower altitude, airborne campaigns, um, you might be looking at a, an area of about 10 centimeters or in that order of, of uh, magnitude. And so you don't get a single return either because within that small area um, there will be different objects potentially, uh, particularly in vegetation of course, you get leaves and whatnot, and so some of the photons will come back earlier, uh, uh, in other words, are higher above the ground surface than, than others. And that's what this figure shows. So um, we see here uh, uh, the intensity, if you like, on this axis, the horizontal axis of the, uh, you, you could think of it as the number of photons that returns to the uh, to the instrument and is measured there. Uh, and so, uh, in terms of time, time increases, and here you get the, as we call it, the first return, which is therefore also the nearest to the sensor. In other words, is the highest point. Uh, and so, the first return is often measured by some threshold, uh, looking at this distribution. Uh, so you might say, for instance, uh, uh, the first 1% of returns uh, occurs at, at, uh, at this particular level, for example. Uh, and so in the case of a tree, you'll see more and more returns because of the, uh, the shape of this tree here. Uh, and then it uh, less and less starts returning again, as um, uh, not only is there less leaves, but also fewer photons that make it through here actually make it back to the aircraft. Um, but, you know, within this same footprint, we've got a little scrub, and so we get a second return here. Uh, and even if that scrub had been under the tree, you might still get some sort of, uh, of a shape like this uh, of the photons that make it through the tree canopy to the shrub and then back from the shrub through the tree canopy back to the, uh, the sensor. And then finally, we get um, the uh, what's typically designated the ground return, which is uh, uh, often characterized by being narrower uh, and, uh, and steeper. In other words, uh, it's a better defined um, uh, solid object in the landscape, if you like, uh, and uh, also, after this, of course, uh, in time, after this, uh, there will be nothing returning back to the aircraft. So we call this the ground return, 
call this the first return, and here's then a second peak, as you might call it. So when we have data uh, like that uh, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, analysis uh, software, it might look a bit like this. Um, this is in, uh, in less tools, for instance, I believe, uh, a, a software specifically designed to analyze um, three-dimensional data points. So every point has got an x, y, uh, the, uh, the the lateral, so let's say the longitude, latitude locations, and then a z point, as in z above some datum, and that datum could be sea level or 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 whatever you assign to it, essentially. So we see here a scan for Black Mountain, and we see the Black Mountain Tower here, and here a little close-up of a tree uh, where you see the shape of the tree, obviously, but you see that some of the photos make it through the, the uh, tree canopy uh, uh, and onto uh, a, a branch, probably in this case, and then return back to the sensor. And there's also a number of uh, uh, photons that have made it right through uh, and again made it back to the sensor. Just want to emphasize, emphasize based on the graph that you saw before, uh, when I talk about photons, I'm, I'm not saying that every point is a photon. Uh, the, these points, again, represent peaks in the uh, waveform, as you saw that uh, in the previous image. So you can uh, do this in uh, uh, in any environment, obviously, and you, depending on what you might interest, be interested in, uh, you would use the uh, results differently. So if you're interested in the um, in the uh, topography of the landscape, for instance, uh, to uh, predict where floods might go uh, if they reach a certain stage, then probably you would get rid of uh, these first returns because they're the vegetation, they don't represent the ground surface. Uh, and so you might end up with this here, uh, digital elevation model. Well, on the other hand, if you're more interested in, uh, in uh, crops or vegetation or forest or whatever, um, you probably want to know the height, at least, of the vegetation above the ground surface, uh, rather than about some, uh, above some datum. So you probably will subtract this from the first re returns that you see here, and then we get a map of the canopy height, um, again, expressed as uh, more or less the highest point in the vegetation, uh, judging the uh, full waveform minus the ground return.